Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets project in Practical Sheets. We are going to start a very very simple project that is very useful in helping me demonstrate which are the ways in which we can enter data into our Google Sheets. We are going to do a weight log journal. Apparently very simple project, we are just going to have a database where we log our weight in a particular date, a particular hour. Maybe we can have uh, different users, for example if you are a, a coach or a nutritionist, then you can have different patients or if you're in a family you can log in the same database the, the weights of the different members during the across time or if you're having a contest, a weight losing contest bef between friends, then you can do it with this. So apparently it's very easy, but I, I'm going to go through through the steps through the different videos showing you many ways or the five or six ways in which we can enter data in Google Sheets. So let's start with the first one, that is the easiest one. First, we're going to set up our database. So the most important thing here is setting up a database because, or, or a table where we're going to enter the information. It doesn't matter how we're going to enter the information, but we need to set it up. So let's say we have our date, then we have the user, and then we have the weight. Maybe some notes or comments, and that's it. This is why I used this weight tracker or weight logger, because it doesn't need many fields. With these four fields, I think we can manage mo most of the cases. Maybe you can add a bit more if you need them, but with these four fields, I think we're, we're good. So the first way, and I'm going to, to have here another, another control sheet where I say ways to enter info or data. So the first way is manually on our database. So I come here and I can put today's date and then user I can say one and weight I can say 77 if I'm doing kilos, if you're doing pounds, then 150 more or less and then notes, no note. And that's it. I go adding new data. This is the easiest way. It took five minutes. We can end the video here and that's it. But for these, you need, you need to have Google Sheets. When there are a lot of rows, you need to go down to the last row to enter your data. So it has some limitations. If you are, for example, if you here, I'm the only one. And if you are a family of four, then there's little chance that many people are entering data at the same time. But if you're a trainer and have 200 clients, there's the chance that two or three or five of them are entering at the same time. So uh, then I'm here and then I see that uh, that Maria is is adding at the same time. So I have to go down. So it presents some logistic problems. So it, this is the first way, the most used one. But I'm going to show you a couple of other ways during this journey in this project. So the first one is through Google Forms. There are two ways actually of doing it through Google Forms. The first one is directly, we're going to connect a Google Form directly from our sheet. We're going to, here in Tools, go to create a form. And it automatically goes with the same, with the same title. So I'm going to create these same questions, date, user, weight, notes, date. Here automatically it, it puts it with a date um, field and I can include the hour if I want. And then here I can have a new one that is user and I can have a multiple and choice and I can here have one and then I'm going, I can add progressively I can add if I have more clients or more members in my family or whatever and then and I'm going to add another question that is wait and I can validate I can do some validations that is a number that is greater than zero that's it and finally I can have some comments it's a paragraph and that's it. I can have, I can do a test and I can do it today at 8 a.m. user one and wait 77 and no comments and submit. And if you see, he created automatically another sheet with the form responses. So this is what I didn't want. And the, the thing is that other than the four there are four variables, forms automatically adds a new one that is timestamp, the date, 
when the response was submitted. So this works, but it's very important that if you're going to use Google Forms in the way we just did, then, then you first connect the Google Form and then you start filling out the info because it creates another sheet and uh, there may be some, some things there. But I want, if I already have my database organized and I already have data, I want to have a way to have directly uh, to connect this form or any other form to my sheet and to, to bring that data automatically. Okay. So this I can do connecting Google Forms manually or through Google Apps Script with my Google Sheets. So I'm going to have a second way, the one that I just showed you, that is traditional Google Forms. A third way is the same Google Forms, but I'm going to connect it manually to this sheet. I don't want a special sheet with this logo of forms. I want to be able to insert information in this database, which I already have. I don't want this timestamp. I don't want this special thing. I just want it to connect to my original database. I'm going to call this data. Okay. So this we can do it in a couple of ways. We're going to script editor. The first way we're going to create a function that says log save form responses. And we're going to add an argument e. Here I'm going to my reference, my Google Apps Script reference. And let's see that we have some events for Google Sheets. And in Google Sheets, we have an event that is called form submit. And in this form submit, we have a couple of things, name values and values. I'm going to show you. So let's say for now, let's lock our E, our E event variable or object that this may, may bring. We're going to save, but for this function to work and I can show you what it returns, I need to go to, to triggers, add a new trigger to this save form response. And we're going to say that it's going to run from the spreadsheet every time there is a form. For this to work, also, we had, we needed to do, to add the form, you know, that I went here in tools and create a form. This is important so that AppScript know which is the form that is connected to Google, to Google Sheets. We could also do it without having to connect it, but we could see this later. We're going to give permissions to our trigger, and that's it. So now I'm going to submit anything. And let's see here in our logs, what does it show me in the, in the logger? So it's an object. So in this object, I have some methods or things that I can bring. One is these name values, and another thing is these values. So let's, let's check them both. Here e dot values and e dot name values. Let's save. Remember, you cannot run the, these functions that have this that have any argument. I cannot run it directly from here because it, it's going to say cannot read property values. Given that I've already connected it through the trigger, then I need to do what I already did: submit another response so that the function will run. Let's go again. Maria, wait. 66 and submit. Let's go to our logs again, executions. And you can see here, Google Apps Script has two ways of collecting the information on the form. One way is through an array, through this array. And another way is through an object. So it is important to know how we're going to access our data depending on your needs. Let's, we, we can, we can do this, but this depends on the name of the question. Or we can do this, and this depends on the order of the question. So may, it, it depends on what you want, but maybe it's better to have the name of the question. So I'm going to access, for example, this user and this weight. How do I access it? I'm going to copy first this and put it in a comment so that we know. So the, remember, this is name values. So I'm going to say name values. And in these square brackets, I'm going to put in quotations the field I want. I want the field user or the field weight. So let's save. And 
do another one. 60. One. Submit. And let's see here. So I have here my 60. But you can see that it returns an array. So if I need the 60 without these brackets to do something with them, then I need to access the zero position of this array. Again, let's do it one, one more time. 45. Maria, submit. Let's see it. So here is my 45. So then I can do something with that. So that's it. Then I need just to order my variables and then send them to Google Sheets. So I'm going to remove this logger log. And we're just going to, to add some fields. So this is going to be the weight. Then we're going to have the user. Remember what do I need in my data? Date, user, weight, and notes. Let's do it in order. It doesn't matter, but just for us. So date it will be... Remember, it's not this timestamp. I don't need this timestamp right now. Maybe I need it later. But for now, I need this date. So it's e dot name values in my brackets in quotation marks date in the position zero then user then wait then user again e name values user in the position zero again and lastly or notes the comments it's called comments so notes comment the position is here. So now the last thing I'm going to do is to add here to our sheet the data. The good thing is that given that, that this project is embedded in our sheet, so we don't need to, to access our sheet manually. We're just going to have this spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet get active sheet get sheet by name our sheet data and we're just going to do a pen row. Bring it down a bit. Pen row. And we're going to append an array that has these four variables. Data, date, user, weight, and notes. That's it. Don't need anything else. So let's save and let's play it. We're going to fill out all the fields. Comments. No. Everything okay. Let's see here. And we have it. And, and if you see, I here I have it also. So again, we, we spent 10-15 minutes doing this code uh, to do something that farms do it manually, but we can customize. And if we go further in this project or in other projects, we can customize whatever we want to bring. We could, for example, do some validations, see if there's a duplicate. We can have a consecutive number. We can have some formula directly from our script or anything we want. So th this is very, these have some limitations. Here we can do whatever we want. You can see that we connect it directly with our sheets in the way we want, in the order we want. So we can control it. Okay, so one last thing is that what happens if, for example, there's no date. Let's see if, if there's a problem. I don't know if there's a problem. Let's see. Let's do just, for example, 766 and put Maria. Let's do submit to see if, if there's a mistake. So look, there's no problem. You can manually here put if the, if the fields are required. So at least we could put that at least the weight and the user is required. Maybe the comments are not required and the date it should also be required, I think, but maybe the time is not so. So I could do a couple of things. We could remove the time or have another field for the time, whatever, however you want. Okay. So that's it. From here, we could add a lot of things. What I don't want is that I don't want to manipulate my database in these first stages. I don't want to put uh, data validation or formulas or condition or anything. I want this to leave it as plain as possible. 
as when we work with a PHP or with a MySQL database or any other database, it's just data. Then if I want to do a, a report, a dashboard with, with colors, with formulas, with graphics, with anything, then I can do it. But I want to leave this simple, as pure as possible. Please don't merge cells or anything else. You can add some format if you want, but that's it, my recommendation. Leave this as data, as raw data, okay? If it's possible. Okay, so here in ways to enter info, I can say Google Forms, uh, connect Google Forms through Google Apps Script. So I'm going to leave it as it is. We, we have ways to go. We can, for example, move along on this way we just did with Google Forms, add another things, add some validations. I could, for example, have a list of users. I could have a sheet with my, with my client list, and then I could bring it uh, directly without having to do it manually so that this, this field refreshes automatically with the new users. This, I did it in one of the last videos called registry reservation system. So you can see it there, but we could also include it in this project if you want. In next videos, we can see other ways in which we can enter data from Google Forms with a, an auxiliary bar here, with a HTML form, with app sheet. There are at least three or four other ways in which we can enter information. I just show you the first three and hopefully this video gets some views and I can show you more. Thank you so much. As always, you can find uh, the, the template of this video and the code we did here. It's very short, but you can download it in my Patreon page. So thank you so much. If not, please subscribe and see you next time.